Dark Goblin possesses the most incredible history of any card in Clash Royale. Not many troops leave players filled with as much rage as the Dark Goblin does. This guy moves like an athlete on steroids, dodging spells left and right, making players so frustrated they're about to throw their phones across the room. Many have underestimated the Dark Goblin, believing he could never dominate the meta. However, history tells a different story. Time and time again, he climbed to the top, proving his worth and securing his place among the best cards in the game. Grab your popcorn and get ready for an incredible journey as we unmask the secrets behind the Dark Goblin's success and explore the lasting impact he's had on the world of Clash Royale. This is a tale you won't soon forget. The Dark Goblin made his grand entrance into the world of Clash Royale on January 13th, 2017. As a rare card unlocked from the jungle arena, that being Arena 9, he introduced a unique skill set to the game. Despite his low elixir cost of 3, the Dark Goblin could provide huge value on the field. His fast attack speed and impressive range allowed him to effectively combat both ground and air units. While his hit points may be low, the Dark Goblin more than compensates with his ability to swiftly chip away at enemies from a safe distance. We've got a brand new card and it is one of my favorites right away. Loving this guy, super fast, not a lot of hit points, but he's super quick. That quick firing ability really makes him unique to any card in the game. Interestingly, the Dark Goblin's name varies across different language settings, being referred to as the Blowgun Goblin, the Blowpipe Kobold, Dark Throwing Dundee, Arrow Blowing Ghoul, and even Dark Throwing Leprechauns. Kind of showcases the developer's creativity in adapting the character to various cultural contexts. The Dark Goblin is not only known for his combat skills, but also for playing the didgeridoo, a traditional wind instrument from Northern Australia. The Dark Goblin's card description also includes a playful reference to the popular bubblegum brand Double Bubble, further demonstrating the developer's attention to detail and humor in character design. As players began to experiment with this new card, they quickly realized the Dark Goblin's potential to turn the tide of a battle. Word of the Dark Goblin's effectiveness spread like wildfire, and players soon fell in love with this unique character, as evidenced by the numerous drawings and artwork found on the internet. I mean, look at him. He's adorable. Players were sketching him in school, YouTubers were teaching viewers how to draw him, and artists created amazing digital artwork on their computers. Some even made Halloween masks of the Dark Goblin. It was amazing to see just how quickly he gained popularity and captured the hearts of all players. The Dark Goblin's popularity even led to the creation of merchandise, showing just how beloved he had become in the Clash Royale community. To further showcase the Dark Goblin's impact on the game, I went on a hunt to find the most epic gameplay and interactions ever recorded. What you're about to see is a testament to the Dark Goblin's ability to create hilarious and insane moments on the field. But before we dive into that, I want to remind you about a chance to win 50 bucks. All you need to do is subscribe to the channel and leave a comment about your favorite card. I'll be choosing a winner pretty soon, so don't miss out on this opportunity. Now, without further ado, let's get into the most epic moments in the Dark Goblin's history. Okay, this first clip is a doubles match. Dark Goblins go down, get hit by a clone spell there, a rage spell goes down and they're just absolutely DPSing down these poor E giants. That rage spell putting in a lot of work. Valkyrie gonna be able to tank the princess tower here and it's just gonna get absolutely obliterated. All right, this next clip, pay attention to exactly how long these Dark Goblins just live. You know, he's trying to bridge spam here. He's got the giant coming through, the double E wizard, the hunter, uh, just everything. Log pushes him back so that they can keep out this DPS. Ice Golem goes down to stop this push even more. And now he's got a third uh, Dark Goblin in the mix, just doing his best. Another Log comes out, pushes the hunter back. Another Ice Golem, he's got a three-man push here, four-man push with that four. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. On to the next one, it's another doubles match here. You know, Red Side's looking kind of down in the dumps. They get their second Princess Tower taken out, a rocket down onto both the King Towers. But once this, four of our boys pushing down on the left side. Bats do go down to try to stop it. Firecracker as well, but they're just obliterating everything. The clone spell just, you know, letting them get an insane amount of damage on those King Towers. 
This next one kicking off right as we're going into overtime. Two Dark Goblins on the right side to stop this bridge span, take out the Evo Knight, and the Skelly Barrel does go in with the Rage Spell to try to get onto that back line, take out the E-Wizard, take out everything there. The Goblin Barrel does go in, the Log comes out, but we both know that's not going to be enough to stop our boys from taking down that Princess Tower. On to the next one here, a Rage Spell with the Executioner on the left side there. Uh, you know, a bit of a scary thing to want to deal with, but this boy just keeps on shooting. It's non-stop. This one Dark Goblin is just never ending on his ceaseless rain of darts and damage upon the enemy. It is actually just ridiculous. The fact that everything that is happening on both sides of the field, and this man is just so focused on his one singular job of... <laughs> it is insane. The value that this card got out of this one play is utterly ridiculous. I did the math, right? This is 73 darts and 10,000 damage that this singular dart goblin on that side did. Insane. And after that, we got some nice calmer clips of the dark goblin just avoiding peril. You know, like it's his job. We got it. The range that he has really just lets him get out of the way of most spells in a pretty unexpected way. When he stops auto attack things, you know, he just has so, so much range. The retargeting onto that goblin hut for no reason just blew my mind. Again, you know, he's focused on the Yeti, cutting himself over to, you know, dodge that log. Another easy dodge on the log. It's just, it's hilarious to see how often this happens in play. Oh, man. It's just funny every time. The bar barrel doing its best to get on the Dark Goblin. Oh, our poor Skelly's there to, t you know, tank for him. I love it. And he just aggroes onto this witch last second to dodge that beautiful log spell. He's just... What a lad. Uh, let's go back to January 2017, when the Dark Goblin was first released. At this time, the Dark Goblin reached only a 2% usage rate, so he definitely wasn't in the eye of top players. However, things were different at mid and lower levels of play. Players were experimenting with different win conditions and good synergies the Dark Goblin created. One of the first popular decks was the combination of the Dark Goblin, Ice Column, and Balloon as showcased by a YouTuber called Molt. The Dark Goblin could take out Mega Minion or Minions while the Ice Golem tanked for the Balloon, creating a pretty devastating combo if the opponent had no log or arrows on hand. Oh my gosh, don't tell me that it didn't get there. Please, please. <clears throat> um, look at that, the Dark Goblin, the Dark Goblin's still doing work, guys. Watch him right here, two, three, four, five, nice. And he's gonna get over there and get off some shots, yes. Dark Goblin, I love you. Players also started realizing that placing the Dark Goblin at the bridge was a great way to get some chip damage on the tower, as players didn't have the quick reaction times they have today. This started working in favor of the Dark Goblin very soon, as Supercell introduced a new set of balance changes. In March, an update decreased the Dark Goblin's attack time interval to 0.65 seconds from 0.7. Although this change was primarily aimed at fixing some occasional bugs, it was definitely noticeable, as more and more players started including him in their decks. One very popular combination was the Giant Graveyard with the Dark Goblin and Miner. This combination was effective because the Dark Goblin could target troops from a distance while the Giant tanked for the Graveyard, overwhelming the opponent's defenses. Players found success with this strategy due to the synergy between these cards, and their ability to apply pressure on both lanes thanks to the Miner in the deck. He's doing a ton of damage to this tower, there's pretty much nothing you can do about it. The Giant is tanking for the Dark Goblin, and I think the Dark Goblin basically took out that entire second arena tower by itself. So, throw the Dark Goblin in your deck if you have a chance. He was super fun to play with. However, probably the most effective deck was a variation similar to the Hog 2.6 Rider deck, but instead of Skeletons, players used Mega Minion, and instead of Musketeer, they used the Dark Goblin. This deck proved incredibly effective, especially against the popular Lava Loon decks. The combination of Mega Minion and Dark Goblin performed extremely well, both on offense and defense, supporting the Hog Rider. So I went over every single month in 2017 to find out if the Dark Goblin had incredible heights at the top of the meta. 
And unfortunately, as you can see here, the Dark Goblin's usage rate often hovered close to 0%, meaning that he was nowhere near in sight for top players. However, that was all about to change soon, as even the best players started realizing the potential the Dark Goblin possessed. The tide began to turn when Surgical Goblin, one of the best players in the world, created a masterpiece of a deck, combining the P.E.K.K.A., Dark Goblin, and Battle Ram, aka the Pencil. The key to this strategy was to defend cheaply with the Dark Goblin, bait out the log, and then push hard with the Pencil, Goblin Gang, and Dark Goblin. This combo proved absolutely devastating, and the P.E.K.K.A., especially effective against tanks and popular expo decks, provided a solid defensive backbone. This innovative strategy quickly gained popularity among top players, propelling the Dart Goblin into the spotlight as a formidable card in competitive play. Yet this was just the beginning of the Dart Goblin's rise to fame, as you'll see in the upcoming year. Eighteen was one of the best years for the Dark Goblin, and again in April when he received yet another buff. This time, the balance update increased the Dark Goblin's damage by 3%. Now, at first glance, that seemed like a pretty minor buff, you know, nothing game-breaking. Yet players couldn't have been more wrong, as his usage rate skyrocketed to 22% in April. This minor buff took him from obscurity to become one of the best cards in the game claiming the 13th spot. To fully understand his rise to the top, we gotta go back and look at this screenshot from March. The Minion Horde had a 24% usage rate, and not far behind were Minions at 19. Both of these cards performed extremely well against the Dart Goblin, because at the time, he had to shoot three darts to take out one Minion. However, thanks to this minor 3% damage buff, these interactions changed completely and it showed. If we look back at the April screenshot after the Dark Goblin's buff, the minions and the minion horde are both gone from the top of the meta, all thanks to the Dark Goblin. This was the first opportunity for him to show his worth on the field, and many players started practicing new innovative decks featuring our little goblin. Ash invited Morton to his video to showcase a new log bait deck he had amazing success with. It was a combination of the Princess, Dart Goblin, and Goblin Barrel. This deck proved extremely effective as you could easily bait out the log with the Princess or the Dart Goblin, allowing the Goblin Barrel to take out the tower, as we can see from Morton's gameplay. It was clear that Morton had fallen in love with the Dart Goblin, as he started using him in the majority of his decks. This unique P.E.K.K.A. Bridge spam deck featuring the Dart Goblin Goblin and Miner also proved to be one of the best decks at the time against popular giant beatdown decks. The goal of this deck was to use your P.E.K.K.A. on defense to counter any ground win condition, and then slowly push with the Bandit and Dark Goblin. Additionally, the synergy between the Dark Goblin and Miner allowed for quick chip damage on the opponent's tower. Right? Do you think that Hog is, is that much better right now in the meta, or is it just kind of... Uh... Yeah, I think it's a good cut right now, maybe one of the best win conditions. Yeah. Because it's a tornado nerf. Mm -hmm. I don't like the nerf on the tornado. Oh, <laughs> nice connection. Nice! All right, all of a sudden, wow, look at that. So much value there, that one big... Soon, players started realizing how powerful the combo of Dark Goblin and Miner was, creating new innovative decks like Surgical Goblin's own creation, a Miner control deck. Musketeers over here, he could uh, go with them. Let's see if he does. Maybe he wouldn't, or maybe he won't. I mean, it looks like he will. So let's actually go with a poison over here for the two sides musketeer. And look at the Dart Goblin getting a ton of value over there on the Ice Golem. But it looks like he will be able to go with his Dark Prince. The Miner Control deck focused on chip damage and control, utilizing the Dart Goblin and Miner Synergy to apply pressure on the opponent. But the most important aspect of this game was knowing where to place the Miner strategically to kite troops behind the tower, allowing the Dart Goblin to do its magic, as we can see from this perfect clip from Surgical Goblin. Tower to 574 HP. Let's go with the defensive miner and let's go with the dart goblin at the bridge. Let's see if the dart goblin will be able to lock on. Looks like the dart goblin is actually locked on, guys. And look at the amount of damage the dart goblin is doing. Looks like it bring, like brought it down to 405 HP. This innovative approach to gameplay helped redefine the meta and inspired players to experiment with new strategies. Morton and Surgical Goblin weren't the only ones who showed how powerful the dart goblin could be. Well-known YouTuber Sirtag also started asserting dominance with a variety of miner and log bait control decks. Sirtag's success 
success with the Minor and Dark Goblin combo further solidified the effectiveness of this strategy in the Clash Royale meta, encouraging even more players to adopt similar tactics in their own gameplay. This surge in popularity of the Minor Dark Goblin synergy showcased the versatility and impact of these cards when used strategically in combination. Despite everything the little goblin had already pinned through, Supercell decided to give him yet another significant buff in November. The Clash Royale community could vote for either a 4% hit point increase for archers or a 4% increase in damage for the Dart Goblin. And of course, the community chose our didgeridoo playing friend. The community has voted and the community has been heard. Dart Goblin wins over the archers. Dart Goblin's damage is increasing by 4%. It'll now kill a knight, Valkyrie, Musketeer, Baby Dragon, Wizard, Prince, Elite Barbarians, and a few other units in one less hit. It also means that it does a little bit more damage to the tower. Not bad. This damage increase was significant, as basically every single troop in the game was wiped out one hit faster, making the Dark Goblin one of the best defensive cards in the game. Best of all, the Dark Goblin hit a 22% usage rate once again in December of 2018, proving that the community's choice was indeed a wise one, and solidifying the Dark Goblin's place as a strong and popular card in Clash Royale. Best bait deck in the game. In this deck, you're going to actually have three bait proponents that are defensive, you're going to end up having the Goblin Gang, the Rascals, and the Dark Goblin. After the Dark Goblin got buffed, it is one of the best defensive cards in the game. The most significant appearance of the Dark Goblin was definitely in the majority of log bait decks, as we can see here from Surtag. This deck was absolutely perfect, as the Rascals, Goblin Barrel, or Goblin Gang could bait out the log, and the Dark Goblin then provided incredible value on the field. With the Prince as a great defensive and offensive card, this deck quickly took the meta by storm. However, what you've heard so far is nothing compared to what's coming. The year 2019 was one of the most challenging years for our little fella. Twenty nineteen started exceptionally well, with the Dark Goblin holding at around sixteen percent, still maintaining its position as one of the best cards in the game. But as we all know, if a card is dominating the top for a long time, there's probably something wrong with it. And Supercell took the hammer and hit the Dark Goblin with a huge nerf. In February, a balance update increased the Dart Goblin's attack time interval to 0.7 seconds, up from 0.65, and increased his first attack time interval to 0.35 seconds, up from 0.3. So if we look at the numbers, you know, it doesn't seem too harsh, but if I show the percentages, we'll realize how huge of a nerf this actually was. The Dark Goblin's attack time was now 10% slower, and his first attack was 20% slower. Uh, that's a bit of a different point of view. It's no wonder that in April of 2019, the Dark Goblin's usage rate suffered, reaching as low as 4%. However, despite this nerf, there were still some players who didn't give up on the Dark Goblin, and came up with new strategies that soon enough started dominating the meta once again. Sami, a very popular and skilled player at the time, came up with a Mega Knight deck featuring the Dart Goblin, Miner, and Wall Breakers. This deck proved to do extremely well for him, as he dominated Grand Challenges, winning an impressive 15 in a row. There weren't many players who had achieved something like this before. Go with the Goblin Gang to apply some pressure here on the King Tower. We're actually going all in on the King Tower. We have those wall breakers. One, two connection, 126 remaining on the King Tower here for the opponent. We go with the Miner. This time he catches it with the Executioner. We have a Mini Peck in the left. We have Dark Goblins in the left. Oh my word. Neither of these guys have big spells. We go in, bats preemptively, NATO preemptively from the opponent. Nice job on defense. We need to get back to a minor, but we need to stop this push first. We have bats, we have the Dark Goblin, we have the Executioner on top of the Giant. Giant's gonna get one hit, make it two hits. 301 remaining on the left tower, 126 remaining on the King Tower. Here we go, Mini Pekka for the opponent. We go in the Goblin Gang in the pocket, minor this time in the safe spot again. Oh, the NATO pulls the minor to the other side. One wall breaker, get to one, he does it, he does it. one wall breaker. Breaker breaks through there. So, Sammy's innovative deck not only showcased the Dark Goblin's potential, but also highlighted his strategic prowess in the game. His impressive winning streak solidified his reputation as one of the top Clash Royale players in the community. 
Sirtag also didn't close the doors on the Dark Goblin and continued to dominate the meta with several log bait decks, proving that the most skilled players are able to adapt and excel with different strategies. It was these players who kept the Dark Goblin alive barely hanging on. Supercell showed at least some love to the Dart Goblin by introducing the 2v2 Dart Goblin Challenge, in which every player had the Dart Goblin in their decks. It was a pretty good sight to see them once again, all over the arena. And that's not all. Supercell also came up with probably the most used emote by the end of 2019, the dancing Dart Goblin that cost $20. I remember how happy I was when I saw him in the shop for gems. I bought him and spammed him for weeks straight. Beautiful times. So, despite these efforts, the Dark Goblin's popularity started fading, and in December, its usage rate reached as low as 3%. Was this the end of our little dart-blowing friend, or was there still something left in his power? Well, I wouldn't be saying that if there wasn't, so stay with me. We still haven't even started, and the best is yet to come. Twenty twenty couldn't have started any worse. The Clash Royale community kind of fell silent as no didgeridoo was heard in any corner of the arena. In March, the Dark Goblin reached only 2% usage rate, one of the lowest points in its history. However, everything changed just one month later. In April, the Dark Goblin's usage rate skyrocketed by 400%. Our didgeridoo reached 10%, climbing back to the top of the meta. The most surprising thing is, is that he didn't really receive a buff or a nerf, so I had to really dig deep to find out why this happened. So after searching, there could only be one reason. In April, the Goblin Hut received a huge buff. Its lifetime was decreased by 20%, from 50 seconds to 40 seconds. But as a trade-off, now the Goblin Hut spawned three Spear Goblins upon its destruction. This enormous buff caused the Goblin Hut to skyrocket, becoming the best building in the game. In April, the Goblin Hut reached 31%, which was unheard of for a building up until now. These three Spear Goblins caused so much trouble that players were forced to use logs or arrows on them. And because of that, the Dark Goblin found its way back into the meta, as a great card to provide value on the field once the log or arrows were used by the opponent. Surtag immediately recognized the power of this combination of Goblin Hut with several bait cards like Skelly Barrel, Bats, and of course, the Dark Goblin. We can see just how annoying the Spear Goblins are and how often players are forced to use several spells to counter them. Spear Goblins were dominating the meta, forcing players to adapt their decks to counter them. The synergy between Goblin Hut and bait cards proved to be a winning strategy in the competitive scene. Just make a massive push again, guys. So yeah, you can try to go in, but... In reality, how are you going to break through a Dark Goblin and Bats? Even if you snowball that, the Dark Goblin's still alive and it trespasses on the left-hand side after. Oh my gosh, you guys see that? You like how the Dark Goblin still defends the balloon and then goes to the left-hand side to pick up what we were putting down and finish off the game? That's what I'm talking about. Another reason the Dark Goblin saw such a huge increase was the newly added Firecracker the most hated and unpredictable card in Clash Royale. The Dark Goblin could counter the Firecracker effectively without getting hit. Ooh, Practical nuke incoming! <coughs> but as we all know, everything must come to an end. With the nerfs to the Goblin Hut, the popularity of the Dark Goblin started to fade. Despite the decline in popularity, dedicated players like Sirtag continued to innovate and find ways to make our Dark Goblin effective in the ever-changing meta of Clash Royale. Their perseverance and creativity showed the true potential of this versatile card. The funny thing is, is that Supercell was still far from done with balancing the Dark Goblin, and for some reason, this card was always on their radar, which is why the year 2021 is one of the most breathtaking years for our beloved Dark Goblin. Twenty twenty one was a year full of challenges, not only for the Dark Goblin, but also for the entire Clash Royale community. And let's not forget, you know, the pandemic. 
The Goblin Drill was introduced to the game and broke the meta in the middle of 2021. Then by the end of the year, Champions were introduced. Somehow all of these meta changes had no impact on the Dark Goblin's popularity, and he remained around 2% usage rate across all levels of play. He was still being used in several bait decks, and players still enjoyed the gameplay and the value he could provide when played correctly. But it was still definitely far from being top of the meta. Soon, that all was about to change. In December, a new update increased the Dark Goblin's damage by 9%. It was a dream come true for bait players. As Supercell quoted, This significant buff should not change many interactions, but the speedy little guy will be more useful against targets with many hit points, like Hog Rider and Giant. The 9% damage is very hard to see at first, but since I've been playing pretty often with the Dark Goblin at this time, I can tell how big of a difference it was. Supercell said that this buff shouldn't change many interactions, but I highly disagree with this, because the 9% damage buff was extremely noticeable, and it basically changed any interaction with every tanky card. And I am definitely not the only one who thought so, as the Dark Goblin's popularity rose by 600%, from 2% in October to 14% in December. Players loved this buff, as you can see from all these comments. The didgeridoo was back, and he was chewing his gum stronger than ever. Oyasu, the best Hog 2.6 player in the entire game, saw this huge opportunity that the Dart Goblin provided. On December 9th, 2021, he uploaded a new video on his YouTube channel, showcasing just how powerful the little guy had become. So, let's watch together some short clips from his incredible gameplay, so you can see why he claimed the title of the best Hog 2.6 player in the world. So starting off here, the Dark Goblin gets placed on the left side here to help deal with the E-Giant. Uh, Dark Prince on the other side following up, but Dark Goblin just sitting there, DPS in a way, outraging the bomber while the Giant does go for this cannon here. He helps take him down and then focuses on the Dark Prince, gets that shield down and is still just happily going away. It tanks one, two, and another Dark Goblin right in the center here to really help clear out whatever defensive stuff he needs to. Making the way for this hog to get in there. Tornado spell is going to pull him in, but it's not going to be enough. He's just going to sit there and hit that Princess Tower as much as he can. Log to stop the Goblin Cage and a Fireball to finish it off. Okay, this next clip is a bit of a long one. We got the Ice Golem push on the left side here with an Ice Spirit to help stop this Valkyrie and Bomber push. Gonna have some Skellies going on the left side here and the Dark Goblin to help stop this Goblin Drill push. Uh, Wall Breakers on the right side, gonna be getting a little bit of damage onto Blue, but obviously, you know, he's got the Hog Rider and the Fireball to help clean up their act over there. Another Goblin Drill on the right side here. Dark Goblin again there to just stuff it out, make sure that doesn't get a whole lot of value for what it's been played for. Hog Rider again going onto this right tower. Uh, Valkyrie left side means he's pretty much got some free reign to get a little bit more poke damage with Fireball and the Hog Rider on that side. Log plus Ice Golem to take out the Goblin Drill yet again. Uh, cannon, oh no, Hog Rider on this left side to, uh, you know, apply some pressure. This constant spam of just Hog Rider, Fireball, Hog Rider Fireball on the Princess Towers with the Dark Goblin to defend along with Ice Golem and Ice Spirits is just such a ridiculously tough strategy to play against. And you know, Red's trying here with the, <laughs> the Goblin Drills to try to get any value, any kind of damage onto these Princess Towers before the timer goes down, but it's not going to be enough. A Fireball is just going to absolutely secure that victory there. And, uh, yeah, it's easy as that, you know, just be good. <laughs> All right. This next one, we have an Ice Golem. And again, you know, this same kind of uh, Hog deck with Ice Golem, Hog, uh, Dark Goblin. He's going to be able to take out the Valkyrie and the uh, Bats there really easily. Log, Hog Rider, Ice Golem. Terrifying thing to see on your side of the field. Uh, you know, just pushing in. And that is a pretty massive amount of damage onto that tower, and that's just gonna take the game. <sighs> okay, so it's safe to say that the Dark Goblin is once again considered one of the best cards in Clash Royale. Unfortunately, that's not the happy ending we all wish for. And in just a few months, things started to go uh, downhill. I mean, really downhill. The Dark Goblin's future is slowly but surely torn apart in the ever-changing meta.
2022 brought with it a wave of excitement and curiosity. Players were expecting several new updates and new cards to be added to the game. In April, the Dark Goblin reached 9% usage rate. It's still considered a pretty good card, but definitely above average. One worthy mention goes to a very small YouTuber named Riley, who started gaining popularity on YouTube at this time and soon enough became one of the best logbait players in Clash Royale. It was amazing to see just how his gameplay was getting better and better with each video. Since I've been watching him a lot back then, I know how much he's improved, and we're definitely going to hear about him a lot in the Clash Royale scene. Unfortunately for the Dark Goblin, a new horrifying update was on the horizon. As someone in the Clash Royale development team had the idea to add a new legendary card that would completely break the game. The legendary Phoenix. The Phoenix was one of the most broken cards at its release. Together with the newly added champion, the Monk, they started dominating arenas across all levels of play. Players were furious as the Phoenix essentially made many cards fade into obscurity, and the Dark Goblin's downfall continued. In November, he reached 7%, already a 50% decrease compared to the previous year. Players were slowly leaving our didgeridoo behind, yet some players achieved incredible heights despite the Dark Goblin not being as powerful as he once was before, thanks to the introduction of some new cards. One of the decks that worked really well was this Goblin Drill deck, with the Skeleton King and the Dark Goblin, featuring the newly reworked Rage Spell. As we can hear from Sir Tag, he explained this deck perfectly. Hey, what's up, guys? Guys, we're back again with a new cycle deck with Rage that is beating the best players in the world. The number 44 player in the world just swapped Rage for Log in his main deck and it made it so much better. When your opponent tries to counter your wall breakers or goblin drill with bats, skeleton army, or goblins, they're going to get wrecked by the Rage. Their bait cards that are trying to counter you will get completely cleaned up. While your goblins from the goblin drill, skeleton king skeletons, and dark goblins will get enhanced to unfair levels of broken, allowing you to break down your opponent's tower even quick. This deck has seen pretty good success in the current meta, showing that even with the decline of the Dark Goblin, creative strategies can still prevail. It goes to show that adaptability and innovation are key in staying competitive in Clash Royale. However, things got even worse in the upcoming months, and the Dark Goblin is about to face the biggest challenges he has ever faced. In the middle of 2023, Supercell introduced Evolution, a game-changing update that would soon become hated by every casual player. And the game started to become way more pay-to-win than ever before. The Dark Goblin suffered among these newly evolved cards, and its usage rate fell even lower in June. The Dark Goblin reached as low as 0.6% at the top of the ladder. Only six players out of a thousand used him in their decks. What a sad downfall. But yet, we are still far from finished. With the introduction of the Evo Knight, the Dark Goblin became even more useless. The Evo Knight's incredible defensive capabilities made the Dark Goblin ineffective against his shield, and his downfall continued. Only one player remained loyal to the Dark Goblin, the one and only king of the log bait players, Riley. So we can't go in. Oh, Evo Barb is right away, then I'll Goblin Gang right for the graveyard. Wait, maybe I could Wallbreakers on the left. He has to defend them. Okay, he can get his Goblins down right, but if I Barrel, he has to defend the Barrel. He's gonna bowler on the right, definitely. Oh, Goblin Barrel here on the left. He has to bowler immediately. Okay, wait, he has no elixir. Wait, I'm gonna Rascals the bridge. He snowballs, but it's a little bit late, and he has no bowler. I'm gonna Dark Goblin too, because he has only like swarmy cards. I'll pre log for the goblins. Okay, nice. Let's go. I'll Dark Goblin here. I'll Barrel again. I have my Goblin Gang ready. I have my Evil Barbs for the Wall Breakers. Evil Barbs here. Okay, he's gonna poison for sure, so I need to keep up the pressure. I'm gonna Rascals here in front of the Dark Goblin. Okay. I'm going to pre-log here for the goblins, maybe. Nice! Perfect log. I'm going to fireball here on the evil archers. I'm going to goblin gang predict wall breakers. I'm going to barrel here on the left. That bomb tower is dead. I'm going to wall breakers keep up the pressure. I'll pre-log the goblins on the right. Nice! Okay. I'm going to barbs predict the miner. I'll goblin gang predict the wall breakers. Perfect! Predicting everything. I'm going to fireball here. And GG's. Let's go. Riley was just on another level. It goes to show that even the most underrated cards can still have a place in the game in the right hands. However, one would say that the Dark Goblin couldn't get any lower than that 0.6% usage rate. And that was its lowest point in history. 
Well, sadly, the worst is yet to come. Twenty twenty four brought several new updates to the game. We've seen the introduction of the Cannoneer Tower, the Dagger Duchess, the new evolutions like Evo Bomber and Evo Tesla. And despite the new updates in twenty twenty four, the Dark Goblin continued to struggle with a usage rate of only zero point one percent in April, showing that its popularity had well hit rock bottom. It seemed that even with new tower troops and evolutions introduced, the Dark Goblin was still unable to find its place in the game. Thankfully, there was still one brave soul dominating the meta, our beloved Riley, who just wouldn't give up on the Dark Goblin. I can Evo Skellies for that ability. I think he just, man, that was not a good ability. Okay, I'm gonna band it. I'm gonna go for the Goblin Barrel here. He's probably not trying. It is just early season. I'm gonna Evo Wall Breakers behind these skeletons. Oh, he missed a snowball. Oh my god, any arrows on the evil wall breakers? The evil skeletons? Oh my god, the evil skellies and the evil wall breakers got a ton of damage on the right because he messed up the timing. Yeah, this is game over. But not only is his gameplay incredible, there's definitely some potential for voice acting too. And at the goblin gang, I need to keep up the pressure here. Ghost. Ooh. <laughs> I'm pretty good at that. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're pretty good at that. Ooh. So now what we're about to see is extremely sad. Uh, make sure to grab your tissues and dark chocolate. <laughs> if we go from April, when the Dark Goblin was at a 0.1% usage, to May, we're going to see that the Dark Goblin vanished from the top of the meta entirely. Not even one soul used him in their deck. That's how low our beloved didgeridoo fell. And because of that, May 2024 is the worst month ever for the Dark Goblin. Yet, as Supercell realized how deep he fell, they knew something had to be done. And soon they came up with a new balance update. In June, the Dark Goblin's damage was increased by 8%. And finally, after all these years of struggle, we could see our Goblin getting some love from the devs. So how did the Dark Goblin do after this change? Well, we reached a 1% usage in June. I mean, that's something. It wasn't dead anymore, but clearly... You gotta do more. Giving him more HP to survive log would definitely help him a lot, but there's one thing that could completely break the game and make him skyrocket to the top. And if you play it all, you definitely know what I'm about to say. Evolution. If the Dark Goblin received an evolution, I think we could see him at the top of the meta once again. That's why we gotta take a look over at the YouTuber Me Graphics. He came up with several interesting ideas on how the Evo Dark Goblin could work. The first concept is to give him a shield, which would definitely help. It's like an HP buff, so he would survive log and potentially even arrows. Heck, they could just put a bigger mask over his current mask. I think that would be funny. The second concept is a triple dart, which is pretty unique, but kind of weak in my opinion. Nothing really game-breaking. But the third concept is the best of them all. Long range. I think that combining the first concept of giving him a shield and the long range could give him exactly what he needs. I strongly believe that once he gets his Evo, we're gonna see him at the top once again. And I can't wait to see that moment happen. Now, go watch this video next, where I tell you about the day Larry broke Clash Royale. It's an incredible journey of skeletons and how they rose to the top of the meta. You don't want to miss this video, so see you there.